Okay, what I'm going to do in this video is simply walk you through uh, how to get the solutions to some of the exercises. So that you can see the methodology, just give you another uh, chance to take a look at it if you're having any difficulties. I'm going to start out with Chapter 6, Exercise 9. You'll also find this Excel file on the uh, Blackboard site, and it has both the um, exercises, a number of exercises, as well as their solutions uh, provided in the different workbooks of the Excel file. So let's start out with this exercise. I have my task IDs here, by these letters. The numbers represent the duration of the particular task. In the upper left-hand quadrant, here next to the letter A, I'm going to want to place the earliest start time. So we assume for all of our projects that we want to start as soon as possible. So I'm enter a zero there. Then what I simply do is I'm going to take the earliest start time, add to it the duration of the task, and figure out then the earliest finish. This is the earliest time that we can get done. This is what we're going to calculate on what's known as the forward pass. We'll figure out these other little blocks after we've done the backward pass through the network. Okay. Now then, since this is a burst activity where I'm basically carrying uh, this as a predecessor, A as a predecessor for B, C, D, and E, I'm going to take this number 2 and I'm going to put that into the early start for all these other tasks. Once again, I'm going to take the early start, add to it the duration, figure out the early finish. And hopefully my math will be correct here. Now, on these merge type activities where we have two arrows moving into the start part or the starting portion of a uh, task. We have to then look at um, the values that are coming in on these arrows, if you will, are coming from these other nodes and figure out which one of the values we're going to take. So for example here with F, I could take 15 and put it there as the early start or 12. Now when we're going through the forward pass, we're going to take the bigger of the two numbers. Basically because we've said that this is a dependency, so even though this one gets done um, at 12 days and this one at 15 days, we have to, F is uh, dependent on both of these being done before it can start, so F is going to get that 15. Okay, so just remember on the forward pass, we always take the bigger of the numbers. So 15 plus 15 is 30. Okay, so now for G, I can either take 30 or I can take 17. I'll take 30 since it's a bigger number. 30 plus 10 should be 40. Now for H, I can take either 20 or 40. So I'm going to go ahead and take 40. Add to that 5 and get 45. What I do here is when I reach the end of the network, I'm going to take the um, value for the earliest finished, and I'm going to copy that into the latest finish. Okay, then we move backwards to the network with a one uh, kind of doing the same calculations with one uh, change in the rule. That is, we're going to take 45 minus the duration to get 40, then, to uh, go backward to G and to E, uh, it's pretty simple here. I'm just going to put 40 in both of these. Okay. Do my calculations. 40 minus 18 is going to be something like 22. Okay. 30 from here. I only have one relationship here, so it has to go... 30 there. 30 minus 15 is 15. Okay. 30 here has to go back to there. It's 
Again, 30 minus 15 is 15. In this situation here, 15 is going to go back to both C and D. minus 10 is 5. Now here's where things get a little bit different. We've got A here, and we need to take one of these late starts. So these are the latest times it can start, latest times it can finish. We need to take one of these late starts here and put it into A's uh, late finish. So what we're going to do is instead of taking the bigger number on the backward pass, this is considered backward, we're going to take the smaller number. So in this case I'm going to take the 2 from D and put that in here. This is another um, indication usually that you have done this uh, correctly, is if you get back to the starting point of A, you should not have uh, the, uh, basically the early start and the late start should be the same. So you should not have a value of like 8 here. So if you have something like 8, that means you did something wrong and you need to go back and look at it. Now we've done the forward pass and the backward pass, we can actually go through and calculate the slack. Slack is simply the difference between the late start and the early start. So in this case I have 0. Up here I'm going to have 13, here I'm going to have 3, 0, 20, 0, 0, and 0. So on my critical path for this network I would say that I have A, D, F, G, and finally H. Because these are the tasks that do not have any slack or float. So there is uh, no slack or float associated with these tasks. You'll notice that um, if we calculate this using the uh, late finish and uh, early finish, we're going to have the same values in this particular instance. There will be times when they will uh, differ. So if we look at the solution for exercise 9, we should find that our answers are the same. Let's move on to exercise 12. Okay, so on exercise 12, we're going to do the same thing here. Start out with A and with B. They're not dependent on each other, so we're going to assume that they both are going to start at the earliest possible time, which is zero days. This here, 2, is going to move into the early start for C. However, for D, it is not going to get that 2 from A because B has a larger value, so we're going to insert the larger value there. E only has one option to get that early start from the early finish of B. <coughs> Let's again do our math here to add the uh, durations. 7 is going to have to come down over here to F. Now here I'm going to take the larger of the two values, I'm going to take 7. Here finally at H I'm going to take the larger of two values, it's going to be 11. Okay, so then 13 is going to become the uh, late finish for the last task. I remember I need to take the s s uh, smallest value, but in this case I just have uh, one value to choose from. Uh, let me see, that's going to be 9. Uh, so 
So 9 is going to go up to here. 9 minus 5 is going to be 4. Okay. I can't move down to this one yet because I don't know what this one. It could be a lower value, so I'd want to take yet. So now I've got to kind of come back and calculate through this side of the network. And now I can see that these are values of the same, so I'm going to take in 4. And 4 minus uh, 2 is 2. And down here I'm going to end up taking the smaller values so of 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. I mentioned in the last one that if you had a value here that was uh, high, um, that was not zero, that there may be something wrong. This is a good illustration of the fact that <coughs> you want to have at least one of these tasks is going to have to come out to zero. Okay? It's going to, uh, our critical path has to have both a beginning and an ending. So I'm not concerned about the fact that A worked out to have two as the uh, late start here. So I'm not too worried about that. Go through and calculate my slack. Okay. And I see here that my critical path is B, D, G, and H. All these other ones have some slack on them. And hopefully if we go to the solution, let me zoom this out a little. we see that <coughs> that is, in fact, the case. Okay. Found one more uh, exercise in this uh, vein here. That's exercise 13. Let me zoom this out just a little bit so you can see it as well. It looks like I can get it all in there. So once again, we're going to start with A, start time of uh, 0, add to that the duration. That duration is going to go back into both of these. In this case, the larger value, right? So I've got 5 and 6 as an option for E, so I'm going to put 6. D just has one option of 5. G just has one option of 6. I do my basic math additions here. Okay, now for F, I have two options, 7 and 8. I'm going to take the higher value of 8. For H, I have the option of either 12 or 9. I'm going to take the higher value of 12. I'm going to put 14. Move down here to four, 14 is my... Uh, Late finish, subtract off the duration. In this case, G has no option but to go to H's uh, late start will be its late finish. Uh, 12 minus 3 is 9. Okay. This one has no ch option either, so it has to go 12 there. 8. Okay. 8 is then going to go both of these. It's six, right? Yeah. Okay, then here for C, I have the option of six or nine. I'm going to take the lower value because I'm going through the backward pass here. Once again, I have two options, in this case, 6 and 6, so it makes it easy to figure out which one it's going to be. And then the lower the two options, 2 or 3, it's going to be 2, 0. I can calculate my slack throughout this network. So I'm going to have a critical path that looks something like H, F, E, 
C and A. Okay, so let's see if that is in fact correct. Let's look to the solution. And it looks like that is in fact the correct solution. The next exercise are going to involve lags. And I'm actually going to put that in a, uh, another little video file. And we'll go a little bit slower on some of those first exercises with lags.